Hey guys, I'm back again with another video on the Z390 RS Master BIOS. This time, we are overclocking the F11L. And in comparison to my previous video regarding the F11C, this one had some very interesting results. And honestly, I've never seen such behavior before. So let me know if anyone else is experiencing the same thing. So starting off, here is the testing methodology. So the fan speeds were constant, ambient temperature was 15, there was no thermal throttling, system was completely stable, and an average of 3 runs of Cinebench was taken. So coming to the scores, uh, something that you'll notice is that the F11C BIOS 5GHz is slower than 4.8, 4.9, and 5GHz on the F11L, which is quite odd. And 4.8 is ranking actually higher than 4.9 in the multi-score and it had the fastest fastest single core speed which is odd because that shouldn't happen and in comparison uh, overclocking 5 to 5 years on the F11C was a breeze it took me like one or two tries uh, when overclocking the F11L I couldn't get 4.9 or 5 gigahertz to work. Anything above 4.8 would just crash. I had to tweak the voltages again and again. It took me like 10 tries. I uh, froze the motherboard a few times. I had to clear the CMOS to make it work again. And it just took a lot of trouble to make 4.9 and 5 gigahertz work. This might be something that they're trying to do to increase stability or something because I remember on the F11C, I could push it as high as 5.2. It wasn't stable, but it worked. This time, on this BIOS, anything over 4.8 would crash immediately. Like, it refused to work. Like, even the minor instabilities would make it die completely. Now, I'm not sure if this was intentional on this BIOS or not, but that's what I was experiencing. And there are a few other things that I tried. Uh, including overclocking using XTU, which refused to go after 4.7, and I tried using the Easy OC from Gigabyte that stopped at 4.8 as well. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Before I show you how to uh, overclock to 5 gigahertz, let me tell you. So everyone has their own different motherboards, power supplies, processors, and depending on your system, these settings might not work, but here, these are just for your reference. So starting off, uh, when you enter the BIOS for the first time, it's going to take you to the easy mode, and you can press F2 to enter the advanced settings. The first thing you want to notice is that there used to be a CPU upgrade option, which had three profiles, basic, gaming, and advanced. Uh, that isn't present on this BIOS. While overclocking, the three main speeds that you want to look into is the core clock ratio, the ring ratio, which is all of the non-essential parts of the CPU, and the AVX offset, which is the audio video instruction set. Now, the first thing you want to do is uh, go to uh, the XMP and enable that to get any free performance uh, that you can get if you have any high-speed memory so then you want to do is start with the three main uh, speeds the CPU clock ratio ring ratio and AVX offset and depending on the silicon rotary and the quality of your processor it's gonna be different speeds so for me I could take the core clock ratio to 5 gigahertz the ring ratio although went as high as 4.8 it worked the best at 4.5 and uh, the ABS offset uh, ran best at 4.8. So if I was running at 5 gigahertz, an ABS offset of 2 was the best. The chart that I show you, uh, showed you at the start, the 4.8 gigahertz was achieved by not tuning anything else other than the CPU clock ratio, uh, ABS offset, and ring ratio. I set the CPU clock ratio at 4.8, ring ratio at 4.5. AVX at zero. No other change was done. Um, 
E and uh, enhanced multi-core performance was turned on, and XMP was turned on. No other changes, and that gave me the best single core result. Now, if you're trying to overclock it further than uh, it would normally go, like I went as far as five gigahertz, for that we start with disabling uh, enhanced multi-core performance. Then we go into the advanced CPU settings and here you need to disable VDT which is virtualization, uh, Intel speed shift technology, ring to offset pin down, CPU EIST, race to halt, energy efficient uh, turbo, voltage optimization and at uh, the lower end C states control. For voltages I'd recommend going into the favorites menu because all the important settings are already there the CPU V-Core load line calibration and the CPU V-Core. The CPU V-Core load line calibration, I've usually used Turbo and it has worked really well for me. It basically manages the voltage drops when CPU uh, speeds up or slows down or is un uh, under load or if it's idling and keeping it at Turbo or at a higher end uh, fixes stability issues when the CPU is running uh, idling or under load. Uh, with CPU Vigor, um, I'd recommend starting with like 1.275 or 1.3, but not go anything above 1.35 if you don't know what you're doing. Anything above 1.3 can actually be risky. So please uh, make sure if you're making any changes, be careful and make small increments like uh, any increment of one, uh, 0 0.1 is enough and then rerun your test to see if the system is stable. Then there are two additional settings that I'd like to go over. Uh, first is the internal graphics. Uh, disabling it can help overclocking since the iGPU gets turned off. That uh, opens up more overclocking headroom for the CPU. And the second one was actually from forums that I saw uh, a question that how can you turn off RGB lights if you don't have any RGB software. So if you're controlling everything to, through the motherboard, uh, you can turn it off by the setting LEDs in system power on state. If you turn it off, all the RGB will turn off without using any RGB software. So that's about it. Uh, let me know if you uh, find similar findings while overclocking your uh, motherboard uh, CPU uh, because honestly uh, it ran the best for me at 4.8 uh, even though uh, 5 years had a higher multi-core score but a slower single core but do let me know what happens when you try to overclock your system and remember it's gonna vary for every system every CPU every motherboard so uh, do take all of these settings with a grain of salt.